Do We Know Them, the podcast, featured my Leo Skeppy coverage, which brought a bunch of new viewers into my audience. But maybe it's a girl thing. <gasps> Is gender playing a role in this? Scooter says girl bubbles lift each other up. Boy bubbles try to ch try to one up each other. Maybe that's it. One day ago, a content creator named Zachary Smeagol ended up posting a video after he had posted a tweet about reaction channels naming Asmin. You guys know I like Asmin. I watch Asmin. I don't think Asmin is a content creator that's everyone's taste, but he is without a doubt one of the greatest streamers and content creators of all time. This man can post three videos in a day and they can all hit basically a million views. When I say Asmin has a community rallying behind him, when I say like if you're featured on an Asmin video, you've been blessed by the YouTube gods, it's because he's got so many eyeball, eyeballs on him and it's just free advertisement. Now, you might not have this attitude and Zachary doesn't because Zachary on September 18th of this, you know, this year, he made a comment about a Asmin reaction video of one of his videos. He said, I have no issue with people reacting to my videos in a transformative way. I actually encourage it, but it's definitely, it, but it definitely sucks to see my video slow down at 300,000 views while Asmin Gold's reaction gets almost a mil. My vid was only up for five days. It's a pretty much a lost all its momentum. And it shows Asmin, you know, reacting. Asmin's video had 900,000 views in one day. He got a million videos in a day because that's Asmin. That's what he pulls. You know, Asmin is like the king of content. He does just in contrast, right? Just to understand it. Uh, Philip DeFranco, who I love, does news every day and doesn't even hit a milli. So it's interesting what people want. Now, I don't know if Asmin's just been on the internet for so long. He has just like this community that loves him or if Asmin is just somebody that people want to hear from, right? If you're on the streamer part of YouTube that does reaction content, you're obviously a sort of like... um uh, an opinion person. Like people want to go to you for your opinion. I watch Asmin to think, oh, I wonder what Asmin thinks about this thing. That's why I watch Asmin. It's why I watch Hassan. It's why I watch a lot of people. I try to, you know, understand what other regular people are thinking about these things. And then I go to the experts, whoever that might be, maybe somebody who's actually educated, right? But the reason you like a streamer is because they feel like a regular person having a regular opinion, right? agree or disagree, right? I don't always agree with Asmin, but it's nice to hear somebody have a take that maybe makes me think differently or whatever, okay? That's why we like Abba and Preach. It's why we like a lot of channels. Like It's why we like H3H3. It's fun to watch people react. It's why I love to react. It's so much fun. And I always joke, news stations are the original react channels. Like That's why I like the news, because they're kind of react channels. They're just reacting to other people. That's why I kind of like it. That's why I like talk radio. It's like you're reacting to other people. You know, it's kind of fun. So, Zach made this post. This video that Asmin posted, as far as I can tell, is gone because Asmin is actually pretty respectful and will not only take down videos if the people don't want them up, but he is willing to even, if you request it, wait to react to your content at, a, you know, at whatever length feels appropriate to you. So specifically, Zach actually said, give me a week at least next time Asmin, which is a problem that lots of content creators feel like they have because they feel like if a week had gone by, maybe they would have gotten those views and then that revenue, right? He also went on to say, Zachary went on to say, that's funny, they're both called Zach. Zach is Asmin and Zach is also Smeagol Asmin. Um, but I mean, Smeagol Zach. So Zach Smeagol, Smeagol, I don't know how to say his name, says, this is blowing up. Just to clarify, I'm not mad at the player, but at the game. Honestly, I feel like YouTube should have a system similar to quote tweets or a kickback uh, system for reaction videos. This actually happened about a year or two ago. I don't remember when, but people started to have this conversation once again. Should React channels exist? Should they give partial revenue to the original content? You know, I always think because I do make original content, you know, I got really sick and I postponed my podcast and I got really tired and then it just didn't make sense from a revenue perspective in the long run. But actually, when I look back, I actually made so much revenue from my podcast and my podcast is what actually made me pretty popular, you know, originally. I didn't, I don't know why I thought being a streamer was the thing, but both seemed to be the thing. It was the consistency, honestly. It wasn't whether it was a podcast or reaction content that helped my channel as a small channel. It seemed to be the consistency. That's why we're bringing back the pod. I'm getting enough sleep. My illness is under control and now I can understand how to balance the two out. But I even thought, even I thought, oh, streaming makes more money, but it's not the streaming makes more money. M most of my audience doesn't watch my stream. Most of my audience watches my videos, watches my podcast. So, you know, there is this conversation that happens where original content creators think streamers are making more money off of them. Even Sneeko 
said he got into streaming because Hassan was reacting to his content and getting more views than his original content. But I'll be honest with you, there are certain types of people that are one, never going to watch your content unless their faves react to it. Or two, we're never going to find your content unless their faves reacted to it. So I'm the kind of consumer because I'm a content creator who makes a full-time living doing this. And I'm a consumer. I personally wouldn't have watched Zach's video on my own. And Asmin would have been the reason I would have seen him. But also my algorithm is now showing me Zach's channel much more frequently because I watched an Asmin video about him. So that's sort of interesting. Now, for some people in the in the tweet replies, uh, they said you should claim a copyright claim, which is like interesting. Should we build a sort of vibe on the internet where we copyright other content creators for talking about our videos? Is that the direction we wanna go into as content creators? I don't think so. I'm gonna say that's probably not the direction we wanna go into, but I can see why the reflex is to do that. I think there is sort of a mistake there, but I can see why people are saying it. It almost sounds good, right? It almost sounds, but then, okay, remember, if you do that, we're just going to become like every other official kind of traditional news outlet. And then we're going to have to run the risk of sort of battling out with each other, the legality of whether or not you can have my video in your video. And what does that even mean? So I don't recommend this. I think this is a bad idea for all of us. I think this is a huge disadvantage. Now, if you go on, people were saying like, hey, I only found you because of Asmin. You know, I had no clue you existed outside of it. And that's kind of good. That's kind of a nice idea. This same conversation was happening, uh, happening on TikTok where some people only knew who Ashniko was because she was on TikTok. Other people never would have found her music otherwise. And so it begs the question, you know, how do you want to be discovered? Honestly, so many YouTubers end up becoming more popular because of reaction channels or because of TikTok. But it is true that there's a select few uh, people who just don't hit their stride that way. It's true that you could put your music on TikTok and it could get millions of streams and you never make any money. It is true that some people can make reaction content to your video and they could make a ton of money and you never see a dime of it. That is true. As a small content creator myself, this is my personal opinion, just my personal opinion in no re way reflects Zach's or Zachary's because Zachary has a right to feel the way he does. I personally feel it is better in my line of business and my part of YouTube to have people react so I can react to them reacting to me than not to have them react to me personally. I feel like that's better for my business, but I can see for his business why it might not be. So he did the work of making a video about it. So he actually made a video, how you how the YouTube algorithm promotes thievery. So the insinuation is that reaction channels are stealing. Instead of remembering that human psychology is playing a role in this and humans just like to watch their faves react to other people. It's, it's comforting, it's nice, it feels good. And so we have to remember that there is just a niche for this and your video might not fit that niche. Now, I thought, and I haven't pre-watched this, that that seemed like an interesting hill to die on for Zachary. Why would he do this? Now, if you go to Zachary's channel, and I think this is sort of interesting, Zachary's channel is kind of not a big channel. His most recent video, the one Asmin reacted to, actually has one of the most, the highest views in the last few months, 400,000 views two weeks ago. Prior to that, 44,000 views, 99,000 views, 90,000 views. Now, 1 million views and 2 million views on two specific kinds of videos. The 30-day videos, which always do very well with the algorithm. Wheezy Waiter relaunched his whole career making 30-day videos. You know, 30 days is a vegan. In this case, Zachary did Surviving Off Chipotle for 30 days. Sounds like uh, heaven on earth, honestly. His other video that did really well was Surviving Off Gas Station Food for 30 days. Also did very well. Everything else he puts out doesn't do very well, right? So this video that Zach Asman covered actually boosted his whole view count better than anything he put out on his own, kind of proving that Asman Gold did benefit him in the long run by promoting his video. And now that Asman did that, now he's making a video that we're all reacting to. And so now he will become bigger because that's how YouTube works. That's how anything works. That's how entertainment works. That's how publicity works. That's how everything works, right? So again, maybe that's just me, but even reading your, I can see chat is talking, saying, I found Britney through someone else. I found Britney because she reacted to this channel. I found Britney because somebody mentioned her. That's great. 
And I love that. That's what I want to hear. And I love that you guys are members. I have paying members in my audience that found me because somebody else mentioned me. What an honor. I'm so grateful. I will always be grateful. I can do this for a living. I think that's why it's hard to imagine being upset that Asmin put your video on blast in a good way. He promoted your video. He said it was a good video. And now when I try to find it, I can't. So I'm assuming Zach Asman took Zachary's video down, which is very interesting. A million eyeballs saw this man's face when prior to Asman showing his video, not even 50,000 were watching. Well, depending on which video you click on. Some of his videos have like literally 5,000 views. Isn't that interesting? So let's watch his video and see what he has to say about this. Ironically enough, reacting to a reaction, or I guess reacting to him being mad at reaction channels. Of course, I I just want to say this last thing because I do, I do want to say this because I think this is the thing that's missing. I use other people's content to have larger conversations. That's what the news does. That's what Dr. Kirkonda does. A lot of the therapy channels do. We watch people to have larger conversations. Obviously, I think I'm being transformative. But if you, if I've reacted to one of your videos and you don't feel like I'm being transformative, like, I get it. And I'm sorry because that's not my intent. I always try to put people's videos in my description. I try to let people know where I got the video. And I even try to wait at least a day or two before I react to people's videos. But if the custom is now going to be a week before we react to people's content, that's fine. I think that's a decision to make because if you're doing drama content, I want to make one last point. I'm so sorry before we begin because I think this is important. If you're making drama content or content that you want other people to see and talk about, just keep in mind, right, that Nick Avocado, Avocado, okay, he got, how many reaction videos were made about Nick Avocado, Avocado's two steps ahead? How many people reacted to that content, including Asmin? This man has 46 million views on his original video. So I'm sorry to say, and I could be wrong because I haven't watched Zach's video yet, Zachary's video yet, but Zachary sounds like a complainer, just like Sneeko did when he was complaining about Hassan. And what does Sneeko do? He got kicked off YouTube. He ruined his whole potential as a YouTuber and a streamer because he was jealous that Hassan was getting more views than him. Why? Why? You could have built your own niche. You could have had a stable income. He had a million subscribers. Sneeko did. And he threw it all away because he was mad a reaction channel was getting more attention than him. Don't complain that you don't have the thing. Be grateful that you can do this full time. And look, if I can do this full time on a small YouTube channel, Zachary should be doing this a full time. Sneeko was doing this a full time. So you don't want to do it just full time. You want to be what? Rich? Famous? What is the thing you're looking for? Because Nick Akato Avocado, he benefited from every single reaction video was, that was made about him. And he still got 46 million views on his original video. So Zach better have a compelling argument in this video about why... He is saying it's thievery and not just good publicity. So let's watch. Do you like free money? Do you wish you could sit on your butt all day and make boatloads of cash? Do you wish you could profit off other people's work and exploit <gasps> stupid, dumb YouTubers? Well, this video is for you. Today, we are talking about YouTube and thievery. How are these things connected? Well, through the magical and often misunderstood world of React content. You know what's interesting is like he's showing Fresh and Fit right now and Fresh and Fit make the same complaints. Fresh and Fit always say like, oh, these people can't make original content. They have to like use our content to make content, but Fresh and Fit's content is predicated on other people's content and or their guests on their on their panels. Like ultimately, a lot of content creation is created by collaboration. So, okay. Yes, that's right. React content. What is going on with streamers reacting to other people's carefully crafted video essays? How is YouTube's algorithm pushing those reactions to the top? And why did I suddenly find myself going viral on Twitter and Reddit? There's a lot to unpack here. Oh, going viral, kind of like the point of content creation. Okay, so is he going to say he benefited from it? Let's be open-minded. So let's dive in. Before we get into the nitty gritty, I'd just like to introduce myself. My name is Zachary Smiggle. I live in Western Pennsylvania. I have one cat named Zoe. I really like playing Age of Empires and mm -hmm. I started this channel 16 months ago. I've been on YouTube for pretty much my entire life. The goal of this channel though in particular was always to create some educational and entertaining content. Ideally, I want to shine a light on problems that people might not know exist or tell stories that I think need to be told 
So that's why I no joke survived off Chipotle for 30 days one time, mm -hmm. weighing 30 burritos, uh, trying to get some real data on Chipotle shrinkflation. Now this isn't my normal video format, but I wanted to make a video really quick for reasons you'll understand a bit later. A few days ago, I uploaded a video about fast food companies raising their prices. I thought because of my background in advertising, I could provide a unique perspective on things. The video is a 16 minute video essay, which took me about three weeks to make. Mm -hmm. And I felt it was a well-structured video. Like I sometimes do, I had one of my amazing friends help me out. And for the first time, I actually hired someone to design the thumbnails, a completely new experience to me. This video was also the first time I shot with my new camera, something I've been saving up for after using just my iPhone phone for about 14 months. Mm -hmm. In the end, I put a lot into the- It is true. Like, to be honest, I, I dabbled and kind of essay content to see how I felt about it. And it took me like 40 plus hours to make one video. And I was like, mm, this isn't what I want to do. But to be fair, my dream was to be a radio host and radio hosts don't make video essays. So I'm trying to re I'm trying to replicate you know, kind of like growing up listening to talk radio. I'm trying to replicate that. I'm trying to have a like a time on the internet. I come on and I talk about current events or trending topics to have larger conversations around what it means to be a person. So this is like, I'm really not trying to come for Zachary. I'm trying to be very open-minded to his experience, but maybe because we're playing different games, my brain couldn't help but be incredibly grateful if somebody gave me a shout out, like what a blessing. Small channels or big, like it just feels like such a blessing as a small content creator. And he's a bigger content creator than I am in terms of, his uh, channel size, he has over a hundred thousand viewer or, or subscri subscribers and his videos are doing really well. Like what a, what a grateful, like I'm so grateful. Like I've definitely gotten at least like 3000 subscribers from Abba and Priest shouting me out at least or me reacting to their content. So I'm never going to say that I, I would never be ungrateful for that is what I'm trying to say. So it's hard for me to kind of see where he's coming from, but let's go ahead and give it a go because I really think he must be playing a game that's so different from us that it must feel like the same game Sneeko was playing, right? Where like they're bitter about the streamers, but in my head, I, I don't know. I think I'm just in the grateful stage of my life where I'm just like happy to be noticed, I think. So, okay, kind of interesting. Let's see this video, but that's okay. I created something that honestly, I'm like truly proud of. One of my best videos yet, in my opinion. As soon as I uploaded the video, I knew it was on track to be a hit. It shot mm -hmm. up to a one out of 10, performing better than many of my previous uploads in just a matter of a few days. As a medium-sized creator- Hold on, go back. Any of my previous uploads- Average view duration, eight minutes. That's rough. That's the hardest part as a YouTuber is to see that people watch for a certain amount of time and then bail. I think my average is about 15 to 20 minutes. People watch and then they bail. Like that's the average. Like that's just the reality of the content. You know what I mean? And like 30% who watch me regularly aren't subscribed. Guys, please subscribe so we can get to 100,000 uh, subscribers, please. Thank you. So it's interesting, right? in just a matter of a few days. As a medium-sized creator, my videos usually take anywhere from three to 10 days mm -hmm. to fully reach their intended audience. For instance, my Why YouTube Feels Different video took five days to blow up, my Chipotle video took six days, and mm. my gas station video didn't catch fire until day 13. So seeing my latest upload reach heights similar to those videos that have hit a million views, mm. this video, in my opinion, was on track to blow up. It reached 200K views in just a few days. So I was beyond excited. Then on Sunday, I started getting Instagram and Discord messages from people letting me know that Asmongold, a really famous streamer, had reacted to my video live on his Twitch stream. His stream involved him reacting to my video, sharing his thoughts on the fast food industry, agreeing with some points and just- Sorry, I realized I'm in the corner there, so you're missing Asmin's beautiful face. Agreeing with others. Overall, he was very positive and nice, and he did tell his chat to check out my channel. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I thought- He did, he was really optimistic and positive, and he did give a shout out, and he links the videos. I thought this was super cool. I don't have an issue with people reacting to my content in a transformative way on platforms like Twitch. For example, last fall, Sandwich reacted to my Why YouTube. So I wonder if he's gonna be upset at this video now that I'm doing, because it's only been out a day, I'm reacting on YouTube. But see, then in my head, I feel like this is such a big conversation to have if you're thinking about getting into content creation. Pick the one that's gonna make sense for you. Like Sneeko said he was chasing money. He said it was very frustrating to make to put so much effort into videos only for Hassan to make more money and views than him. But if you're chasing money and views, then 
sure, become a streamer, but like not all streamers make money in views. I'm like, I'm a small streamer. So obviously I make a living, but I also make a living because I also have a podcast and I do other things. I offer a lot of perks on Patreon. Like I do a lot of extra work to maintain uh, living here. A lot of YouTubers won't do that. Like a lot of them don't have as an active presence on their discords or they're not being as like involved in putting on, you know, it just depends. Everyone has a different business model to maintain an ability to create for a living because that's what we are. We're creatives. At the end of the day, unless you're a Walmart YouTuber like Logan Paul, you're a creative. And so that's your decision if you want to go more Logan Paul, which I think Sneeko did. Sneeko went from being a creative to being Logan Paul, which I personally think was a mistake. Like, I think that was a big mistake from a creative's perspective when he was already stabilized as a content creator. He could have been, uh, you know, he could have done so much more, I think, with his content as a creative. But you have to make that decision, right? And again, I'm not saying I know Zachary's intent, but let's see if we can figure it out from this video because I don't know what game he's playing. Is he here to be Logan Paul or is he here to be like an activist? Because he's not doing like the Khadijah thing, right? So is he here? What is he here to do? feels different video on her live stream and I thought that was an amazing and awesome experience. Now I understand that something like this might not be okay for some people, but for me, a stream like Gold's was totally fine. I didn't consent to it, but I understand this is how things work nowadays and if more people see Ooh, I didn't consent to it is very interesting language. I didn't consent to it. I didn't consent to it. It is an interesting idea. Like, I remember watching a TikToker get upset that, like, an Ellen show, I don't remember what show it was, had used her TikTok without her permission and didn't give a shout out. And I just thought, why don't you just make a video saying, oh, my God, I was, like, featured. Because what that does is it gives you relevance to your audience. You're not trying to get Ellen's audience. You're trying to get your audience to give you relevance because somebody like Ellen or Rachel, whoever, like, whatever celebrity it was, promoted your TikTok. So then it makes me wonder, like, are you guys just like, do you think, what is it? Is it entitlement? Is it like a hope for something else? Like, I don't know what you're chasing. And again, I'm not just saying this to judge. I'm just trying to figure out what category of like music you are, what like type of fruit you are. See how we're all fruit? Guys, I made a new, I made a new, oh my God, I made a new, um, I made a new thing. Oh my God, I have to show it to you. Okay. I made a new thing. Guys, fruit categories. How beautiful is this? We're all in categories as content creators, as people in general. But like, what are you trying to do? Because I'm trying to be a pineapple and it feels like you're trying to be a banana, but you're not like you're upset at the pineapples. And it feels like maybe you should just like stay a banana. You know what I mean? Like, I just I don't understand what's go what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, why do you what's happening? You know, what is the thing when he says, like, I didn't consent to it? Like you you put your content on the Internet to be consumed unless YouTube like do you want to live in a world where YouTube doesn't let reaction channels exist because I don't want to live on that YouTube I don't want to like I don't want to live in that world like that sounds horrible but not because I'm a reaction channel but because I watch them I love being a reaction channel but I also love watching other people react that's my favorite part of the day because I am a consumer oh my god if my faves couldn't react to other people's content like why would we even watch because like video essays are great and they are great, but it's very specific. Like, it, does he want to be traditional media? Like, does he want to work for PBS or NPR or something? Does he want to work for Vice? Is that what his goal is? You know what I mean? Like Chad is even saying, I almost only watch reaction channels. Yeah, I love reaction channels. I love hearing what other people think about other people. So it feels kind of interesting, this idea. But like he said, he doesn't mind that Asmin did it, but he didn't consent to it. Using the word consent is very interesting. So let's keep going. My content on another platform, great. I'm okay with Asmin Gold's reaction during his stream because his viewers tune in for his live streams for sometimes like five or six hours just to watch him. Clearly, people like the dude. They're there to watch him, not me. Not someone else's video, but him. His mm -hmm. reaction to my video was just one tiny segment in a lengthy stream. However, where I do have an issue is a 36 clip of Gold's reaction to my video was uploaded to YouTube using the exact same title as mine. And I noticed my momentum shift. Before his reaction, I obtained about 225,000 views in just five days. After that, there was a slight boost and then a slowdown resulting in a massive mm. click-through rate drop-off. But more on that later. You see, streamers like Asmongold usually don't run their own YouTube channels. They have editors. Look, the problem with YouTube is you work for free in hopes to make money. That's how it works. You make content for free 
and you hope you make money off of it. There is zero guarantee you will make any money. So some of my videos make $2 and some of my videos on occasion when I'm really lucky make $700. But that's the part about being a content creator that's difficult. So what you're hoping to do is you're hoping your Patreon takes off. That's what Flagrant does, right? Flagrant relies heavily on the Patreon. You, if you're a content creator, re rely on memberships. That's what H3H3 is kind of known for. They rely heavily on memberships. Like you use different ways to maintain being a creative because that's what we're doing. We're showing up for free and we hope we get paid. And if you're lucky, if you're very established like an Asmin, you're making a ton of money, you're guaranteed payment. H3 is guaranteed payment at this point, but that's the problem. As smaller content creators, they have to work up to that momentum and that could take up to 10 years. That could take a long time because you don't know. And then what if you get banned? What if you get demonetized? A lot of education channels get demonetized if they're doing certain types of education. So they have to find different ways to supplement the income, maybe by having a regular job and still making content. Right? So I'm not sure what Zachary's hope is, but I'm I'm here to hear it. Let's hear what he has to say. To clip content from their streams and post it to YouTube. In return, these editors get something like 75% of the ad revenue. These clippers, as I like to call them, are often anonymous editors who are fans of streamers turned editors. Often these clippers hijack the original's video thumbnail, slapping the streamer's face on it, and the goal is honestly to mislead viewers scrolling through YouTube to thinking that Asmongold, Hassan, or XQC actually created a video about- That's not what's happening. See, I knew it. This isn't what's happening. It's like he's trying to have an opinion about a bubble he knows nothing about. That is not what, nobody's being tricked into anything. We're watching it because we wanna hear what they have to say about the video. About this topic. This is why these clippers have come under fire in the past and likely why many of them stay anonymous. At first glance, these reaction uploads. Yeah, it's so clear they didn't create the work, right? Chat says it's always clear they didn't create it. It's so obvious they didn't create it. It's obvious I didn't create this video, right? Like you're not watching an original video. And again, Zachary has the right to feel this way. He has the right to feel like, man, I put all that work into it. Why didn't anything, like why did they get more views than me? Because they have the thing. Like, that's the reality of so much of this content. Jubilee had the same problem. Do you know that's why Jubilee flagged everybody's content? Because they were mad that Cody Ko and Abba and Preach were getting most of the revenue and they weren't making enough of the revenue back. So they started, like, penalizing our streams. That's why I don't watch Jubilee on my stream, right? Because they take down my stream if I'm watching it. But then I don't watch Jubilee videos. I don't watch Jubilee on my own. You're, you're I'm like, and if I do, it's because like somebody's like, can you please watch this? Or maybe we watch it on Discord because like we can watch YouTube videos there without any problem. It's interesting that these channels don't understand they're missing out on that niche community that's not gonna watch you unless they really, really like you, right? So it's, I can see why they're upset, but I'm just speaking as somebody who's in that niche community. Like we're not gonna watch your videos unless somebody else watches it. And you're hoping that what you're getting is like 1% of the people that wouldn't have watched you originally to watch you anyways. And look, I've had small content creators say things to me like, hey, not to me personally, but they'll say it on stream and I think it's about me because I had just done it. Like if I shout out a smaller streamer, I'm like, go watch them or go watch their video, go like it. They're like, hey, it brings down my watch time. So if people just come watch, like, like my videos, you're ruining my watch time. Okay, then I stop promoting them. If I hear anyone make any sort of complaint that somebody is promoting them, I stop. Do you know what I'm saying? Can you hear me out on that one? I'm hearing a complaint. So my brain is putting him in the category of feeling something, he's missing a point. He's missing the point. Your video, based off his other videos on his channel, they weren't going to be the one. It might've been the one, but now you're in the viewpoint because you went for Asmin. And maybe Asmin reacts to this, maybe he doesn't right? Julie, welcome to memberships. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. It's interesting when we're having these conversations, I feel like he's not accounting for those communities, but why would he, when he just said something so untrue about reaction channels, right? It might not seem like a big deal, right? It's just one video, but this actually exposes a massive problem with reactors, YouTube, and how its algorithm handles reaction videos. If you're not familiar with YouTube's algorithm or recommendation system, that's okay. I'll explain quickly. Basically, several factors determine whether a video will get recommended frequently or not. The three most important ones are a video's click-through rate, or how often they click, retention, or how long people watch the video, 
and viewer satisfaction. Do they come back to the channel after they're done watching that specific video? These factors largely dictate whether a video will appear in the recommended or suggested tab, which is where most medium to small creators get their traffic. Of these factors, the easiest to track and arguably the most important are a video's click-through rate and watch time. Simply put, if a video is being clicked more often and watched longer than another, it'll be recommended more. That's how YouTube works, plain and simple. Here's where reaction videos create an uneven playing field. Because reaction videos are usually longer, they tend to have more watch time. They can also fit in more ads, which means more revenue for YouTube. On top of that, these videos come from established channels. Mathematically, people are more likely to click on a video from Asmin Gold than from me. This higher click-through rate- Only if they like Asmin. This is the part where they're missing it. Only if they like Asmin. Many people will avoid the video because Asmin's face is in the thumbnail. Plenty of people hate Asmin. Plenty of people love him. You know how many people I know who do not watch Hassan? I mean, I was one of those people who never really watched him and now I've been watching him a lot more and I'm like, oh, like Hassan's really entertaining. Like at the end of the day, that's what you're looking for. You're looking to be entertained or educated, but the video essay communities are not the same people who watch reaction videos, though there is an overlap. There is an overlap, right? I watch much more reaction content than I do original video essays, but there are a bunch of, especially women or femme content creators that I watch a lot of their video essays because I want to hear from them particularly, specifically, because I relate to them. So then you're, you have the element of content or content watchers only watching content because they're relating to the person, right? So it is kind of interesting. Um, how people feel about this. And again, chat says there are Hassan react videos where the video plays in his empty chair. There should be a line somewhere. I dream of the day Hassan plays my video without interruption and walks away and goes to the bathroom for 45 minutes. And I don't know what the difference is between me and other content creators, but that is the dream. That is literally the best thing I've ever heard. 30,000 people are going to watch my video without interruption. That's what I'm hearing. That's literally what I'm hearing. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't understand how that's not what everybody is hearing. That's the only thing my brain thinks. It's like, yeah, cool. Free advertisement. I pray the day Asmin or Hassan literally watch my video and walk away. I, XQC, please. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I cannot see the disadvantage to this. Like, I just cannot see the disadvantage to this. But apparently, people feel like there's a disadvantage. I don't know what it is. Because Sneeko even complaining about Hassan reacting to his content and getting more views... Hassan mentioning you keeps you relevant. That's what I'm saying. Like in this sphere, being talked about is what keeps you relevant. So I don't even understand what game they're playing if it's not to stay relevant or to stay in the media. So I don't know. I don't know what makes me different. Or maybe it's the fact that I just know that networking is one of the best ways to build momentum on YouTube. So it just seems like a positive. I don't know. To be fair. I don't make video essays, so I don't know. It gives reaction videos from large streamers an immediate edge. So when you compare the two, it's easy to see how the odds are stacked in the favor of the reaction video over the original. To counter this- Oh wait, Chad's made a great point. I feel like they get too hung up on the metrics. Okay, there are YouTubers that will post a video, but if it get, doesn't get monetized, they'll take it down and re-upload it. I don't do that. Because like, again, I, if I wanted to be more money focused, and again, I want more money. This is very important. I want more money. But sometimes for me as a content creator, it's better just the, to get the content up than to figure out why YouTube is mad and demonetized me. Because YouTube doesn't tell you why they demonetized you. It takes a really long time to figure it out what it could be. And so it's almost better to get things out quickly and build an audience of subscribers and members who come in than to worry about it. But there are content creators, I'm sure you've seen them, they post a video, it gets demonetized, they take it down, they re-upload it. For them, that business model works the best because they're trying to get the most revenue on every video. I'm always a, probably an old school YouTuber in this sense where I'm just kind of hope, hopefully like relying on multiple streams of income to keep being a creative is the focus. But of course, I always want more money. I would love to be a millionaire. Who wouldn't, right? So it's not me saying I'm not in it for the money. It's me saying that I'm willing to take a hit if it means getting content out and it means broadening the conversation and being in the mix. Because for me, again, the content is the focus. Make content first, money, right? That's kind of how my model is. I feel like with these YouTubers, it's probably like money first, then content, which is interesting why they hate like um, XQC or Sniper Wolf, because like, what do you think they're doing? So then I have to ask myself, okay, is Zachary concerned with the money? 
Is he concerned with the popularity? Like, what is he concerned about? What's the concern? It's like, that's what I'm confused about. Maybe I'm just a neurodivergent queen and I don't get it, but I don't get what is he actually concerned about, right? This reaction streamers will often tell their viewers to go like the original video, but ironically, this can hurt the original oh, video. There it goes. When someone clicks on a video just to hit like and then immediately leaves, it drags down the average view duration. This? Okay. But see, once I heard that, a smaller content creator said that on stream once, and I heard it and I thought to myself, I'm never going to promote their videos again. Because again, I know what you're saying out loud, but the point is not to make the video blow up. The point is to make sure a person has a potential to be a subscriber who shows up to your streams or watches your future content. Isn't that what's interesting is my brain is like, yeah, it's going to bring down my watch time, but that's a potential like consistent watcher. I'd rather have the, I think I'm more about customer acquisition. Maybe. You know, I mean, I'd rather have somebody build a routine around my stream and come be a consistent watcher than somebody who like, I don't know. But yeah, once I hear that from people, I just stop promoting them. If me giving you a shout out is hurting you and you don't like it, then I guess we just won't get a shout out. one of those key factors YouTube tracks. It can also impact the click-through rate. If someone subscribes to the original creator because of the stream, but then doesn't actually click on the original video when it appears on the homepage, the CTR will take a hit. And why would they click? They've already seen the content on their reaction video or that stream. A lot of people assume that after watching a reaction, subscribing and liking the original video, fixes everything. And while this may help future videos and introduce the creator to a new audience, which is great, the video itself, the one that took time and effort to create, is negatively impacted. It's a complex situation, and a lot of the things that people think will actually help the video actually hurt it in the long run. YouTube has a limited amount of space to recommend videos. Mm, good point. Chad says he does seem attached to the value of his content as a creative, not necessarily the money monetary value, but I could be wrong. He could be coming from the perspective of a creative who wants to be popular. And so he's like, I put all this time into it as a creative and now I'm not seeing the benefit. But that's that's interesting. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. There's something here that's disconnecting for me and my brain. I think as somebody, look, as somebody who's had so many collaborations, has had millions of views on my videos that are now private, it was never the reason people stayed on my videos because if people like you, they stay. If they don't, they don't. But your niche is what's specific, knowing your niche. And it feels like, does he not know his niche? Does he not know who his audience is? Is he, what, what is the goal for his brain as a creative? And yes, all of us make content for free in hopes to get paid. That's how it works. Like none of us have a boss that lets us come into work and says like, you'll get paid even if this video doesn't make any money. Unlike editors, who of course get paid regardless if the video does well, usually, right? Usually. And again, it depends on how you feel about it. Look, I don't, I know Chad is saying Snapper Wolf and XQC feel like plagiarism. I would love it if XQC watched one of my videos. That'd be great. Even Sniper Wolf. I am literally that brain. I'm not saying I'm better. I'm saying that's my brain. My brain goes, cool. I love it. Watch me. Watch me. Do it. Watch me. That's the dream. Watch me. I want everybody to watch me. That's literally the dream. Watch me, Sniper Wolf. Like, I don't care. I mean, she's, you know, not a great person, but I mean, it puts my face in people's eyeballs. Like, that's all I care about. I just want people to see me to see if they like me. And if they like me, they'll subscribe. And if they don't, they won't. But it's not, in my mind, a disadvantage. It just could never be a disadvantage for people seeing my face and learning that that, oh, I know that curly haired girl. I've seen her before. Where have I seen her? That will never be a disadvantage to me. As long as, you know, it's hopefully not a smear campaign. That would be horrible. But then, hey, I get a chance to make a video about it. And then that boosts my views because people are like, yeah, Brittany's being lied about. And now Brittany's defending herself. And then, boom, subscriber count goes up because the receipts, girl. So I don't know. It just, my brain loves it. My brain's like, watch my video. Don't talk about it. So it that's just my brain. I'm just trying to explain my perspective so they understand it's not malicious. For some of us, that's like our dream. And for other people, it's like their nightmare. And they will always choose the video that is going to appeal to the most people. I'm not saying anything radical. Numerous other creators have backed these claims as this has happened to a lot of others too. So that night that the Clipper uploaded the reaction to YouTube, I tweeted about this situation because I have a small circle of creator friends and was looking for their thoughts and opinions on the subject. I woke up and the tweet exploded. It gained significant traction, reaching millions of people, resulting in news articles being written about it. 
Wow, you got more publicity out of Asmin reacting to you and you getting mad about it than you would have had before. Now your face is on all of these things. And now you can add it to the credibility of your resume. Interesting. And even making the top page of Reddit. It became mm. clear to me that this wasn't just... And yet, if people were going to like you, they would have stayed. That's the difference. Asmin got so much viewership during the Amber Heard Johnny Depp case, and people stayed for Asmin. If people don't stay for your videos, they just don't like you. Okay? I've had, like... Remember that stream where I had, like, thousands of people in, in the stream? If they stayed, they stayed. But if they didn't, they didn't. They weren't here for me. You know, remember they came from Dream's community and George's community? They were so sweet, but they obviously weren't here for me. They were here for me to talk about their favorites. And it was a great stream day, but that's the point. You get opportunities like this, and then if people stay to be with you, that's the goal. The goal, the re you, have to re you have to be humble, bro. You got to remember, bro. At the end of the day, there's a reason Asmin is Asmin. The reason, there's a reason like communities like certain people and they keep others like middle-sized, right? Like the, the numbers, yes, you guys remember, the numbers were crazy that day. We had a great stream. They were so sweet. Everything was great. They didn't stay. I'm not the content they're looking for. And that is just what it is. Chat says, I think you're being maybe too harsh, but I'm not the YouTuber. So what do you mean? Tell me about it. Cause I, I want to understand, right? I do want to understand to the best of my ability so I can kind of get where people are coming from. Chat says, I found Brittany through a reaction video she made to Abbott and Preach. I saw a hot redhead uh, illustration with big tatas and clicked. That's true. I did have art at the time that was like that. Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, let's see. Some people are more attached and sensitive or some people are more sensitive and attached to their work, which can be unhealthy for going to be YouTuber. That's true too. Let's see. Uh, Maiden says, I think, I, I think, uh, those words can sound harsh, but if you think about it in a factual way, it's just true. What did I say? I didn't, did I, what did I say? Tell me, because like, I, I'm just speaking from the heart, like how I talk normally. And I don't mean to come off so harsh in this, but I, I'm trying to, I always did the fact that like they wouldn't have been chosen. I think this is just like radical acceptance. I think this is like, you know, when you have a band and there's a front runner who obviously everyone likes better, but the guys in the back want to be the front runner. I'm so sorry. You're not it. Like you're not the front runner of the band. And it, sometimes it feels like a lot of streamers think they're the front runner of the band. You're not the reason people are coming to the event. And in the thousands, you're the reason they're coming in the hundreds, which is just as valid. That's why you have to be grateful as a creative that you can even make a living doing what you're doing because you never know if you're gonna be the front runner of a band. You know, but like at the end of the day, like, you know what I mean? Just some people have the thing and some people don't. There's a reason why, what was that band that everybody was obsessed with that was after my generation? Uh, the watermelon guy, he like went on to like be the Harry Styles. Like you're not Harry Styles. You're the other ones who's no one, no one remembers their name. And that's okay. That's valid. They still made money. Those people still made money. Those people still have careers. It's like when you're in a comedy show, you're not the reason people watch the comedy show, but you're kind of like a plus. Yeah, One Direction. Thank you. I feel like it's okay to know who you are in the story. It's okay to be the guys in the background that don't become Harry Styles, but you can't be mad at Harry Styles because people like him. What are you mad about? Like, it just feels silly to, you know what I mean? Okay, wait, hold on. I feel like you're misinterpreting what he's upset with. He's not upset with Asma, but more the clip channel for reposting a video with the same title, but that's okay. It's a reaction channel. He posts the same title with re Asma reacts. That's the business model of reaction channels. You know what it feels like? It feels like businesses are at war with each other. Like video essays, essayists aren't in the business of reaction channels, aren't in the business of news channels. Like reaction channels, it's very common for them to use the title and reacts because that's how, it's like using the song or using a movie title. It just makes the audience know what's going on and they're like, okay, cool. I used that the other day in one of my videos from Zoe Unlimited who's a way bigger channel than I am. And I just did that so people knew what we were talking about, plus my own title. I did two titles, her title and my title. So I can see why he's upset, but I feel like he thinks, and this is my thought, just like Sneeko, they think, in my opinion, that somehow these people took away their views. And I just don't think that's what's happening. I think you were either gonna get the views or you weren't, in my opinion.
That's what I think they're actually saying is they're trying to say like, if you didn't make this reaction channel, I would have gotten the views. And I don't think that's true, especially based off of his channel. I don't think that's true in my opinion, but I could be wrong. I just, uh, yeah, I think that's the issue I'm having, right? Okay. Let's see. Well, people are protective of their creations. I do think there's a good amount of ego involved in these types of reactions. So people will see your words as harsh. Okay, fair. At the same time, if big corpse can strike a, a video because you use five seconds of a song, you can be a little salty about your channel analytics being messed up. Well, by another YouTuber. And that's the thing. Basically, the only way to get around this is to say that we don't want people reacting to our content in, a, in the way that we're like people do it, which is watching the video from beginning to end. And if that's the case, that's fine. I will be fine as a content creator because I make original content and I'm not worried about that. The dilemma is that I think it's a disadvantage to channels like mine. My, and you know why I think that? I think I'm better in a whole form. I think if somebody watched my whole video from beginning to end, they're more likely to like me than if they only watch 10 minutes. So I think as a content creator, I know I am more digestible in full form so that's why I would love if Hassan watched one of my videos that was really good, like maybe a clip or an opinion I had that was really well thought out. And he was like, oh, OK, now I understand where she's coming from versus uh, like watching me in a snippet. I probably sound a lot worse. So maybe that's why I'm, I'm just sharing my perspective so people understand why I think it's interesting that people have these perspectives. Right. Let's see. I do agree that if you got 300K views with the reaction, you would have gotten uh, that or less without it, honestly, because they added a view by reacting. Mm. It is interesting. Yeah, I don't know what exactly everyone's goal is. My goal is to get as many eyeballs on me as possible so I can get the one or two percent of those eyeballs in my subscriber base. That's what I think. Yeah. OK, good. Good hearing your thoughts. That's really helpful because I'm always interested. Uh, I found your channel via App and Preach shouting you out. Shout out to App and Preach. Shout out to Adam, App and Preach. Okay, let's keep going with this video. It's a me problem. It's a widespread issue on YouTube. I also received numerous messages from other creators sharing their experiences with streamers reacting to their content and how often it negatively impacted the video's momentum. Okay, hold on. Uh, Rob something. I script write videos for a living. Asmin keeps reacting to my work, generating many times the view count and killing the video traction. We must be, we're just playing a different game. It must be that. You know, it must be that. Let's see, what if your memberships dropped because other channels were reacting to your streams and uploading them to YouTube? Um, impossible. Like if, if people reacted to my streams, there's no reason for members to join. Like they're gonna come find me if they want me, right? But if they reacted, if they upload whole videos to a YouTube channel, then I just take it down because then you're impersonating me, which is bad. Don't impersonate me. But if somebody was reacting to my content, I think that's super valid. Again, I'm not saying he's wrong. Zachary's not wrong. I just disagree with him that it's bad for his model, but maybe I don't understand because that's not how I work. Look, as a person who ha has a Patreon, as a person who gives to Patreon, as a person who is a membership of people's channels, I think my goal is always exposure. I think Hassan has said this before too. Like his goal is to get as many eyeballs on his stream as possible. Me too. I just want people to see me that way. The 1% of the million people who see me, they can subscribe. Guys, I can see my analytics. I know a million people see me and don't watch my videos. Or if one of my videos hits a million views and I don't get a million subscribers, that's just what it is. This guy, Zachary, that we're talking about, he has multiple million view videos and still doesn't even have 200,000 viewers, subscribers. His videos on average don't even hit 100,000 views. So it didn't even matter that two of his videos got over, this video almost got 3 million views. One of his video got almost 3 million views and he didn't even crack 500,000 subscribers because that's how YouTube works. You're, you don't get one million, I've had multiple million view videos and I still haven't hit 100,000 subscribers because at the end of the day, that's how it works. If a majority of your subscribers aren't even watching every video you put out, your goal is always to get the 1% of people that might like you in your regular viewership. It's not to get the whole thing. Asmin is an amazing content creator because for some reason, he gets those very high views. If you go to um, Blade, Social Blade, Social Blade will show you what your grade is as a YouTuber. He's an A minus YouTuber. That means to subscriber viewership ratio, he is higher than the average YouTuber. I'm like a B minus or a C YouTuber. I have you know 93,000 subscribers 
and yet only five to maybe 30,000 views if I'm lucky, 100,000 views. So I think there is like this, I think there's like this conversation about what is your goal as a business content creator, you know? But okay, so they're upset. They feel like Asmin and these content creators are ruining their potential to get famous. I disagree with the premise, but I'm here to hear them out, right? Okay, let's see. Streamers reacting to their content and how often it negatively impacted the video's momentum afterward. I had multiple messages from creators letting me know that if I reach out to Asmin Gold, he'll take the reaction down despite the potential damage that it has already done. Regardless, I reached out to him and his clipper, but didn't hear much most of the day until someone mentioned it on his live stream because my tweet was really blowing up and then he reached out. Asmund Gold apologized and we had a really brief but nice. nice exchange and he had his clipper private the video. I was never trying to create any drama out of this, truthfully. That's interesting. So I told you I tried to look for the video and I couldn't find it. So Zach took it down. That's really nice. Zach is very lovely as a community member. So this is Zachary and then Zach is Asmin. And that's, I'll just call him Asmin. That's really nice that Asmin did that. I couldn't imagine as a content creator asking Asmin to take my video down. And I don't know what the difference is. And that's what I'm just trying to figure out. Why would I have Asmin who put a million views on my face, ask him to take a video down? That, do you know what I'm saying? Like, what was the point of that? What was the point of the long run? You could have made a networking moment with you and Asmin. You could have like uplifted each other. He could have been like, oh, I even Asmin reacted to my video and loved it. Hello, branding. You know, Asmin approved. Branding. I w oh my God. If I got an Asmin approved video, I would just be like, Asmin approved. So, okay. What, what do you think? What do you think, right? You know? Yet I had a lot of people coming after me in the comments because of my tweet. And I think this highlights a potential issue with this reactionary landscape. Just because it's normalized doesn't make it okay for everyone. Many creators are afraid to speak out about their videos being reacted to without permission because these super streamers often have intense fan bases. Again, I'm not blaming- Sure, there could be a disadvantage to sort of being featured. Like if somebody makes a hateful video about you, then you might like think before you sleep, right? Like that's bad. If think before you sleep hates you and makes a video about you, you're about to get run down by a bunch of haters in your comment section and they're gonna thumb down your video, which sucks, yeah. When somebody makes a video criticizing you, you better be ready to punch back. Otherwise, like, that's really bad, right? But Asmin usually is 99% of the time very positive about the videos they watch, right? Now, Discord says, this reaction is similar to when authors are upset about their books not being marketed well. When you're creative working within a system, there's a point where reactions and perceptions of your work is not within your control. I think his energy would be better spent focusing on what he's doing to promote his videos. Like saying, Asmin approved. My video is Asmin approved. Like, hell, like get Asmin's community on your side. Don't piss off Asmin's community when they're like a really nice base to have. If, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of interesting. Blaming Asmin Gold, but since this happened, I've received more negative hate comments than ever before. And my take was- Wait, wait, wait. Since he what, took down the video or complained? Streamers often have intense fan bases. Again, I'm not blaming Asmin Gold, but since this happened, I've received more negative hate comments than- Ah, uh, okay, hold on. You're right. Chat said Asmin's community isn't all that great. No, no, no. Asmin's community is full of like incel boys, right? Who all smell bad. Absolutely. But let me tell you, okay? If Asmin promotes you positively, you be positive with the audience, right? But there's always a part that are going to be mad, right? But is he receiving bad comments because he was mad at Asmin? Because again, and I think this is the problem, Zachary is so valid for how he feels because he's a creative and a content creator and this is how he feels and this is the negative for him. I think the dilemma is that other people, that's their hope. Their hope is someone bigger than them shouts them out. That's like the dream. So the fact that Asmin did that for him and he doesn't see the benefit is hard for people to process. Now, there's always going to be part, bad parts of a large audience that are just like awful. Asmin argues with his audience all the time. Parts of his audience are very brain dead. He knows that. He blocks them all the time. It's like very fun to watch. So I'm not promoting any hateful comments. I screen all my comments on my videos. If you piss me off, I'll block you. So like I'm all about it. Block all of these people, right? But that's the, the thing that people have to understand is I, I could have seen this uses leverage, but for him, it seemed like a total negative no matter what, which is interesting. 
you know? Uh, let's see. The problem is YouTube. It should give a part of the monetization to the original YouTuber. I mean, just a heads up, a lot of reaction channels, if they're not big, they're like, they might need, I don't even make guaranteed money in all my videos. Like, that's the thing that's kind of funny is like, you wouldn't be even getting anything. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of the irony, but also you could get something and maybe that's, maybe that's a good fix. Maybe that is a good fix. But then I'll tell you this. I think a lot of people would stop reacting because I share revenue with a lot of companies do do that. A lot of companies will flag my videos and then I'll have to share revenue with them. And sometimes it's worth it. And sometimes I just say to myself, I won't talk about them anymore, which is great. Like, look, don't get me wrong. I'm an adapter. I don't care what the rules are. Tell me what the rules are and I'll play the game. That's how, that's how I work, right? That's how I do my thing. So if we want to look for a future on YouTube where we have to share revenue with everybody, fine. No problem. Like I will just stop doing it. And people will stop talking about you except like in other ways because like it's not worth it as a creative to do that. It's only worth like, okay, when you do a collaboration with another YouTuber, you don't usually ask for each other's revenue. You usually work together for free because you know it will promote you. Asking for a cut of the revenue is kind of in bad taste for creatives unless you're doing a formalized collab. Like in a sense that I'm doing a joint project, let's take 50-50. Like that, you know, I didn't go on, I don't go on people's streams and say, hey, like I was on your stream and for this time I saw this many super chats, give me a cut of it. Like that's not how YouTube works. That's not how creative, that's not how podcasting works. That's like saying, hey, you were on my podcast. I want a part of your revenue. Or I was on your podcast. That's like, that's like, you know what I'm saying? Like it would be so icky for people to be like, hey, can you come on my podcast? I'll give you 20% of my revenue. That's usually get guests because it's an exchange. The guests go on Stephen Colbert. Stephen Colbert gets a good guest for the show and the guest gets promoted. Stephen Colbert doesn't pay the guest as far as I know. Do you know what I'm saying? There's, that's the, I don't know what's happening right now. What are we doing? Ever before. And my take wasn't even that extreme. I was simply expressing my disappointment that my video seemingly lost its momentum. When you take a middle ground approach or stance. Yeah, it's so interesting. I wonder how this guy feels about Sneeko because Sneeko has exactly the same opinion about Hassan. You seem to make everyone angry, but in situations like this, there are a lot of gray areas. That's For true. Instance, I agree there are a lot of gray areas. Aspen Gold did tell people to check out my channel and like the video, which I generally appreciated. However, reposting the reaction on YouTube with the same title while my video was still new, that I didn't really appreciate. We can be appreciative and critical of things at the same time. To me, that's like, okay, somebody messaged me on TikTok and they're like, girl, you reached the T channels. And I saw my clip on a T channel and I was like, oh, that's fun. Like, I just thought that was fun. And like, sometimes my viewers will be like, oh my God, Brittany, you were mentioned. Actually, do you guys know who the thought spot is? Irene, the thought spot had me featured in one of her videos. Then one of you were like, hey, this girl showed your video in her video. And I was like, oh, who is it? Then I started watching her consistently. And now we're friends. Now we're friends. We talk to each other off air. We talk to each other in private. We're friends now. And she's one of my bestest, like, new friends that I've met. Like, not that we're very close yet. But, like, I really like her. She's really fabulous. And I never would have known who she was unless one of my viewers was like, hey, do you know who the thought spot is? I was like, no. And now I watch her videos. We talk to each other. She's such a great person. Like we vibe so well. I think she just understands my brain so well. We have such good conversations in private that I'm like, oh my God, it's so nice, right? So again, it's like this, for maybe it's the girl bubble too. Like we're promoting, 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 promoting. I don't know, right? Oh, chat says I started watching Irene after you reacted to her. Love that. Love that. Yes, I love Irene's content. Yes, girl, we love her. I love her. So again, it's just like one of those things where maybe that's it, you know? Or yes, I love the Do We Know Them crossover. Do We Know Them, the podcast, featured my Leo Skeppy coverage, which brought a bunch of new viewers into my audience. But maybe it's a girl thing. <gasps> is gender playing a role in this? Hmm. Ooh, is gender playing a role in this? Ooh, interesting. Maybe we see it as like a shout out, like a girl shout out. Like, I make a lot of reaction videos to Kidology, but I've never heard Kidology. And Kidology's been on my show. We've done panels. We've done stuff together. I don't think Kid, I mean, if Kid ever wanted me to stop reacting to her, we could have that conversation. I absolutely would value that. I respect her. But it's one of those things where I have never gotten the impression that she was upset that I reacted to her essays. But if she did, I would hope she would reach out to me so we could talk about it and I could stop if that really bothered her.
But I always felt like we were promoting each other because she's also featured me in some of her videos. So then I was like, it feels like we're promoting, 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 promote. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shout out to Swan Star who says, I found you via George and Katie and I've stayed ever since. Let's go. And you're a member. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Scooter says girl bubbles lift each other up. Boy bubbles try to try to one up each other. Maybe that's it. Yeah, maybe that's it. See, KO, also a member, says I found your channel through Kidology. I'm very honored. I'm very honored. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's a big part of it. Damn, you know? Maybe that's why I'm having a hard time understanding his issue. But okay, let's keep watching. Healthy, and that's why I'm doing this, and that's what I'm trying to do and have always done. In my Why YouTube Feels Different series, I talked about how wild my blow up was last August and how YouTube runs ads on videos even if the creator isn't part of the YouTube partnership program. For example, I had a video that got 2 million views and YouTube ran ads on it, but I didn't see a dime. I didn't break any rules or do anything wrong. The system just works in a way that is disadvantageous to creators who blow up early in their YouTube careers. I didn't share this expecting YouTube to magically write me a check, but with the hopes that the system can be improved for future creators. And the same thing is occurring to me now. I shared my mm, maiden says boy bubbles with the competition and win lose girl bubbles lift each other up for the win win. I know which one I prefer. Yeah, maybe that's a big part of it. That's why I mean females in general, femme people, women, like we tend to be more community based. We tend to think about bringing each like people with us, and we tend to be like I'll bring you with me. But boys, I think yeah, I think maybe they're doing the competition thing, which is a mistake. Which is why the boy bubbles are so toxic, right? Because they're just like they will burn you to the ground. Like, they don't want to see you succeed. Like, they don't want it as much, maybe. Maybe that's it. But then again, of course, shout out to the boys who have been very supportive, like Abba and Preach. Like, I really appreciate that. Okay, okay. Tweet not to be ungrateful or create drama, but to highlight that the system is a bit messed up and could be better. There's just a lot of layers to this. There's clearly a difference in- Okay, wait, boy bubbles? Chat says boy, uh, orbiters are a thing in boy bubbles. Yeah, but if you're an orbiter, they don't give you credit. Because remember when that whole thing was happening a couple years ago with the orbiter issues, I needed to make it clear, like I was doing this full time before I ever collabed with certain people. I was doing YouTube full time without collaborations at one point in my career. And then I started doing more collaborations and that was great and everything. But I want to make it clear, like girl bubbles, I don't know any girl bubbles that talk about orbiters because what an orbiter is, is it's not giving credit to the content creators for being independent on their own. One of the things that I think is so fun about watching Kidology and I, since we're friends, or even Irene. So take me, Irene, and Kidology, the Powerpuff Girls together. I never look at one of them and say, oh, without my video, you wouldn't have been anything. I don't think Kidology ever looks at me and goes, Britney's an orbiter. I don't think Irene ever looks at Kidology or me and goes, ugh. Like, we look at each other as independent girls who overlay sometimes, but we have our own audiences. If you're an orbiter, that means there's somebody bigger than you that you need to sustain your your income. None, all three of us are very independent. We do not need each other. We are all independent content creators when we met. All three of us had our own audiences, our own income before we met each other. Then we started collaborating. But when you have an orbiter bubble, that means those YouTubers need to stay good to the orbiter king. Otherwise they don't get promoted or they get blocked, right? So from my perspective, like I'm Buttercup, obviously, guys. Come on. Which one of y'all is Buttercup? I'm Buttercup, bro. I'm Buttercup. Avi, bro. Avi, 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 Avi. Irene is Bubbles. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's Avi, Avi, Avi. Okay. So, no, no, no. Yeah. And then Blossom, right? Is Kidology. I'm just trying to say, like, at the end of the day, we are all so independent. And then we came together and we built something. You know, Asmund's talked about this in terms of collabs. Like, I think he tends to look for people that are independent on their own because you don't want somebody who's always writing your coattail who's always like so dependent on you and because it hurt, like it feels bad thinking like other content creators are the reason you're successful or not. You just want to be able to say I'm successful and if they promote me, great, but I'm still doing my own thing. Right? Okay. Let's finish this out. A regular creator's transformative reaction and the ones that we are seeing on TikTok. Hold on, hold on. That's different. I disagree. The boy bubbles like uh, Defo help each other like Kai, Sinat, and Speed. Okay, those are totally different though. Um, that's not an orbiter. That's different and that's specific. Kai and Speed, there's a lot of things at, at stake here. Okay? 
Trust me, I've heard enough interviews with both of them. They know for a fact that they are sitting on the, they have so much stress on their shoulders because they're black, because they're the best, because they're the top, because people are looking at them to fail, because racism is playing a part. Kai and Speed rely on each other for a lot of reasons, but they're also independent on their own. They're definitely different. They're successful in their own right. They're some of the best content creators out here in terms of streaming. They're so successful. But trust me when I say they are riding a burden that is so hard. So everybody has their own thing. But if you stay a small content creator and you're dependent on, an, again, an orbiter, like Kai and Speed aren't dependent on each other. So the boy bubbles, the bubbles that promote each other are different. But if you have a boy bubble that's an orbiter audience, that's different, right? Like that is very different. Like that's, you know what I'm saying? So I think that that's how I look at it is like if you start off as an orbiter, but then you make your own thing, that's great. Like Hassan obviously built his own thing. He's the more successful person. Like Hassan doesn't need to have orbiters, but he could if he wanted to. But Hassan was the more successful of the quote orbiters, but he was just somebody who was being helped out. See, that's the problem. Your friends shouldn't make you an orbiter. If you're considered an orbiter, somebody, I think it's negative, in my opinion. You're like the fish on the bottom of the whale that's eating the, 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 like, the kelp or whatever is underneath a whale. I don't know. The food. You know, you don't want to be that. You want to be completely independent. That if this person burns, you're still great. Right? So like Hassan surpassed any, anything. He is the bigger creator. You know what I mean? So again, like when we're having these conversations... Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you do not want to be, a, it's like that girl who yelled at me on the panel I was on and she's like, you're making it harder for women in this space. I don't want to be a part of a space where women have to silence themselves so boys pick them. I'm good, bye. I make enough money. I'm independent. I don't need you. But also, even if I did, I wouldn't do it. It's like, the, it's like any man in power or any woman in which you have to silence your voice in order to play a game with them, like, I'm not doing that game. And I think a lot of people do that game in a way that I'm not going to do it. I'd rather burn the bridge and see it burn because I know I don't need it. I would rather stand on my principles. And I think a lot of content creators don't think, don't have a confidence in themselves to think they can do it without the bigger content creator. And that's a bad problem. I think not enough content creators think they're good enough to do it on their own. But I do. And I know I do because I do it, girl. I do it, girl. Hello? shorts and reels. What I went through isn't the same as what a channel with fewer than 1,000 subscribers might experience if their video gets reacted to. For them, a big creator's reaction could be life-changing. I've heard stories of small channels getting a massive blow up from a single shout out, but that doesn't erase the negative experience. That's true. Some people, because Kai actually just said this in an interview, he said consistency is key with streaming, but also luck. It's luck. The right person has to give you the right shout out for the right audience to find you and love you, right? It, it, it's luck plays such a big role. Maybe Asmin's audience wasn't the right audience to give this guy a blow up. It's like some content creators have one shout out and they're millionaires for the rest of their life because of it. Other content creators get a shout out and they made ten, like $10. It's just how the cookie crumbles. And I think it's about which audience you got the shout out from. I'm not saying he doesn't have negative repercussions. I'm sure if Asmin shouted me out, part of his audience would come and hate on me. And you know what I would do? Just like Asmin does, I'd block them. I would block them and be like, thank you for the view, block. Thank you. Okay. Experiences that countless others have gone through. There's a lot of nuance here. And honestly, there shouldn't be, not when there are solutions within the reach that could satisfy everyone. We can absolutely do better. I believe the internet is vast enough for thoughtful, transformative reaction content, and I fully support fair use. But this experience has shown me how much- Orbiters are kind of like cloud chasers. For those confused about what an orbiter is, an orbiter is kind of like a cloud chaser. Like an orbiter only exists because they're orbiting somebody. They wouldn't be able to live on their own. So you don't want to be an orbiter. If you're an orbiter, that's fine. Lots of people do it that way, but I don't recommend it as a content creator. I think you don't want to be the person that relies on this content creator being David, Do David Dobrik is a good example. David Dobrik had Jason Nash and all those people as orbiters. And basically they only maintain celebrity status because of him. Now, some managed to make podcasts and become successful on their own, but not everybody was able to, right? The idea is if you lost contact or relationship with that content creator, do you lose your career? 
That's what's important. If this person burns the bridge with you, do you still have a career? Because if the answer is no, you're an orbiter. If the answer is yes, then you're a successful content creator. If your career only exists because basically you're friends with this person, that's what happened. Basically, and not even just friends, but that they are featuring you and shouting you out. Because technically Jason Nash is still friends with David, but it wasn't enough. Once they couldn't collab anymore, Jason went downhill because nobody was there for Jason. They were there for David. Right? Like, it doesn't matter how many bridges have burned in my life. I'm still a content creator, baby. Because I always was and I always will be independent. And that is a pride I have because that means I'm really here for a purpose. I really have the thing. I have the thing to be independent. I don't need them to make money. And that's the difference. Pearl, exactly. Pearl is nothing without the menosphere. Pearl, you know what I'm saying? See, the difference between Sneeko and Fresh and Fit networking to success and them being orbiters is Sneeko was successful without them. I was successful without people. And you always get a boost in your income for sure because collaboration does that, but I existed without people. Sneeko existed without Fresh and Fit. Fresh and Fit existed without Sneeko, Right? So it depends on the bubble and how we're using this term, but I think of an orbiter like somebody who's dependent and basically like Adam Sandler and then the guys who kind of orbit him and are only popular because he puts them in their movies, like they're not successful enough on their own. That's kind of how I think about it. Room there is for YouTube to improve the landscape for everyone. If this reaction-based content is here to stay, YouTube has the tools. Um... Shout out to Jane for asking, when I watch your videos at 1.5, does it affect the watch time? I always finish the stream. Yes, it does, but that's okay. Don't worry about it, girl. YouTube will count the stream time as the amount of minutes you watched. So if you watch it on times two, which I watch most content on, it does cut the viewership in half. I don't care. Enjoy the content how you like to enjoy it. You being here and watching through as amazing as it is, girl, do not slow down the speed, girl, okay? I listen to almost everything I listen to, including audiobooks on times two speed. I am not about to tell you not to do that. Be comfortable. Enjoy the content the way that you enjoy it. Don't worry about it, okay? To make things better. Tagging a video as React content, similar to how they tag AI content, would be a great start. YouTube used to have a response video system. Why not have something like that for reaction videos, where perhaps the watch time can funnel back to the original video? Even better would be introducing a revenue split system similar to what YouTube has done with music rights. This system could be a game changer for small to medium-sized creators. Across the platform, this likely adds up to millions of dollars of revenue for creators who need it the most. YouTube could even introduce a feature that allows channels to mark their content as React friendly, giving them the power to choose whether or not their videos can be used in reactions. This would ensure that the original creator gets the recognition and compensation they deserve. This would also be a game changer for streamers on YouTube and a major advantage over Twitch. Right now though, creators have no choice. If they don't want their content being used, they likely have to track down that specific- I mean, you could just put it at the beginning of your video, like please don't use my video in a reaction content or put it in the description or put it somewhere where we can see it. Like if I go, cause before stream, I try to think of the topic I'm gonna talk about. I try to find videos that kind of coincide with that topic. And then, or I watch a video and think, oh, that's pretty good. We should talk about that on the stream, right? So like if I saw a video and the the description or the, there was a thing that said, hey, don't use my video in reaction content, I just wouldn't. Like I wouldn't use it. So that's, maybe he could do that, right? Fic reactor and request its removal. It's also important to draw a line between fair use and outright exploitation, especially when the content- So, okay, chat says, isn't this guy, uh, isn't what this guy is suggesting against fair use. He's saying there's a difference between fair use and just stealing content. So he's making the argument that reaction channels are stealing content and they're not transforming it. I wonder what he think about my content because I don't know if I'm transforming it enough for people, but I hope so. But I'm using your videos to have larger conversations and I always link the videos, even if I think they're shitty, in my descriptions, okay? That's something I did, I think a couple years ago when we were having this conversation, like a year ago, whatever it was. So I think he's, he wants to put, he wants to say it's nuanced and there is a difference between transforming and stealing. And the problem is, is like, what's that line? In question is- And by the way, Fresh and Fit accuse Abbott and Preach of this all the time. Abbott, uh, Abbott and Preach are the reason I watch a lot of content 
because I like their reactions. But Fresh and Fit were accusing them of stealing content because they're like, you don't even make original content. Without us, you wouldn't even have a job. So even Fresh and Fit in their ideal world would probably not want Abbott and Preach reacting to them. Now, if that was the case, I think we'd all turn into news channels and then that's how we'd get aware around it. Because to be honest with you, like at the end of the day, that's kind of what the news is. It's like a big reaction channel. Directly competing on the same platform. What I went through is nothing compared to some of the worst case scenarios. We've all seen reactors blatantly steal content without any attribution. One of the most notorious offenders in recent memory is Sniper Wolf, who not only steals content, but also doxed Jack's films. And her videos are still being promoted to the masses. Mm. I mean, how wrong is that? And what message does that send to other creators? Why spend weeks or even months? Genuinely, I wish she would react to my content. No, I'm just kidding. See, I'm just like, put my face in front of, put my face, let's go. As long as you're not slandering me, but even if you do that, I'll just make content about it. If it's a good enough video. A lot of the people who try to make videos about me, you guys are bad at making videos. I don't know what to tell you. It's not worth it for me. You know, especially if you have zero subscribers. But like, you know, if you're going to bring up Sniper Wolf, who is a horrible person, by the way, I think what's important to know is like in this world of entertainment and capitalism, welcome to capitalism. And we're all trying to make money in this hellscape. So for some of us, the best we can do is get a shout out. For other people, it seems they don't want that. So interesting. Months creating something only to have somebody react to it and reap all the rewards. Even worse, YouTube's algorithm tends to boost these videos because again, they generate an insane amount of money. They have really high watch times. They appeal to a lot of people. So it's a win for YouTube and these react. Carmen, welcome to memberships. Thank you for being here channels. That's why we need a better system in place on YouTube to protect creators, ensure fair competition, and make sure content is used in a transformative, value-adding way, not simply exploited for quick profits. Now, as for the video itself, I'm not sure how this will all play out with the ongoing debate on Twitter and a Reddit. Interesting. Chat says even video essays are just long-form response reactions. I kind of feel that way too. Like, I kind of feel like at the end of the day, video essays are also just reactions to other people's creations. But I understand, like, I do get what they're saying. But I don't know. It's hard for me. I just, I'm running such a different model. But this is, you know, this is good to have the conversation. I'm glad we're having the conversation, you know? Reddit post, which is now the highest upvoted post on r slash YouTube of all time, my video has gotten a surge of additional traffic. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here and claim that because his reaction video went down, that all of a sudden I'm getting views because of that. Correlation doesn't always equal causation. And like, think about the button. If I don't watch the button on my own, like if Cody Ko and Abin Priest didn't react to the button, I don't think I'd love it as much. I love it because they make me love it because they're so funny reacting to it. Not anymore. I don't watch Cody Ko anymore. He's banned. Cody Ko canceled, but Ab and Preach, not canceled. Ab and Preach, like when they react to the button, that's some of my favorite content. And that's why it's sad, I think, when Jubilee came for them because it's like, but they put you on the map. Like ultimately, in my opinion, Ab and Preach and Cody Ko were the reasons that people know about the button in my opinion, but I get it. Like, I'm just one of those people that basically, unless, look, I watch a lot of female or femme video essayists and I do watch a lot of their content on my own, but I also talk about it here on stream because I think they bring up great conversations and points that I'd love to talk to you about, right? So I don't know what it is. I, I don't know what the disconnect is really, but maybe they feel, I don't know, do they feel entitled? Do they feel sad? Is it just like, hey, I'd love some credit for my work? I don't know, I think, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe, yeah, I don't know. There's something here. I fully understand that. Even when it comes to my video losing momentum, it is speculation. However, based on my experience and what many others have experienced over the years, I strongly believe that reaction content on YouTube negatively affects a video's growth, especially during its early on stages. This issue isn't even about me or Asmongold. This is a site-wide problem. But ultimately, I'm in the middle of this field because I wanted to clear the air with you. I wanted to show you exactly where I stand on this. I had a video come out. 
I noticed some things and I wanted to share it with you. Why? Because transparency is incredibly important to me. And like all my videos where I'm critical of something, in this instance, YouTube and its landscape, I hope the changes can be made so that we can have a better future together. As always, thank you so much for Forever. your support. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Okay, we're gonna look at the the comments in a minute here, but does he have data to back that up? Chat says, I think it is true. I think there is data. I could be wrong, but I think I have seen plenty of people talk about the data that there isn't. Okay, this is okay. This is how I look at it. I think there is data that shows that there isn't much of a transition or a rate of viewership from the React channels to the original content creators. But I never thought there was going to be. Because as a person who just watches tons of videos on marketing and everything, from my understanding, you really got to have a thing that makes people want to watch you because they relate to you. And if you don't have the thing, they're not going to do it. And more than that, if they're not interested in this specific niche consistently, they're not going to do it. So the reason people watch late night hosts is because they want to watch the specific host. They don't really care about anything around it. They just care that it's Colbert saying it or Jon Stewart, right? If you have somebody else, like, then it maybe wouldn't, they wouldn't watch the same segment. So sometimes it's about who you are. And I think that's what's so hurtful to the creative because they want to think like their work stands on its own. But a lot of the time when we watch something, it's because of who it is. And so that's how I look at it. If they don't like me, they don't like me and I move on. I don't take it personal. Either I'm what the audience wants or it's not. And that's how I think about it. And I already know my niche. I already know who I need to get my videos out to. I already know which content creators could give me a shout out and it would be the boost of my life. But I also know why that when I get shout outs, it doesn't work for certain bubbles because I'm not very digestible to a singular bubble, right? So I, I really grabs, I think my audience is incredibly nuanced. Like I think it's so specific, it's so nuanced, but there are people who don't always perfectly fit into bubbles. That's why they end up here, I think. And that's hard, that's hard because that makes the marketing that much harder. How do you market to a non-bubble? Versus all these other people, it's like very clear like who to market to, who's the audience when you're a React channel or a streamer or you have a niche of education or money or, you know, something like that. Okay. So uh, who is the example I had in my head? Um, oh my God, I can't think of who it was. Oh, Jon Stewart gave up his spot. Trevor Noah took it over, right? If I recall correctly, Trevor Noah had the thing though. We didn't know if it was going to work, right? We didn't know if it was going to work because it's really hard to replace Jon Stewart, but he did a very good job at it. It might have gone down the tube, but it worked. See how Lily Singh went from YouTube to trying to do like a woman's radio or woman's TV show and it didn't work. At the end of the day, it might hurt your feelings, but people don't want to watch you. Funny enough, she was so successful on YouTube, maybe she should have stayed there. She went against the audience that had gotten her to that position and tried to go into the mainstream where she wasn't wanted. And at the end of the day, we make decisions in our career to either understand the audience that actually loves us or to try to get a bigger one. But Lily Singh, like regular people weren't gonna be into it. Even though she had a wonderful platform on YouTube, she should have kept it there. And I know it hurts people's feelings like people don't wanna watch you, but I think that it just like lets me know where I stand. It lets me know that the kinds of people that wanna watch me, I think there's millions out there. How do I get their attention? I think every person has the potential to be a great content creator if you accept that most people aren't gonna like you but certain people will. Remember that PewDiePie, he might be very popular, but not everybody knows who he is. There's 8 billion people on this planet. 8 billion people. And plenty of people I meet in my real life do not know who Mr. Beast is. So every time you think to yourself, I'm gonna have to be Mr. Beast or it's not worth it, you're making a mistake. If you think I have to be Asmin, I think you're making a mistake. I think if you really wanna do content creation for a living, then you have to know which audience is gonna like you and go out for, to get them and just be happy along the way that people promote you. Look, it benefited me in some ways that Boy Bubbles promoted me, but it also hurt me in a lot of ways. Hateful comments, frustrating things. I had to block a bunch of people, you know, slurs, threats, you know, all these things, you know, all like YouTube normal stuff. I just block them. And the audience that from those bo Boy Bubbles became a part of my audience, those were the good ones. Even though I went through hell in those Boy Bubbles, Part of my audience stayed from those boy bubbles and now they're some of the greatest people in my chat. So worth it. Because those amazing people found me because they were in that boy bubble and now they're here. 
I'm going to say that's a win. But for some people, it's not. For some people, it isn't. It just depends on how you're playing the game. Now, moving forward, I'm more clear that I don't want to engage with toxic boy bubbles. Even if we talk about them, I don't want to engage with them. And that's because I realized even though I might get a couple of key players like in my audience that are nice with peace and love, like it's not worth the mental, the mental stress. You have to battle uphill in those boy bubbles and it's not worth it in the long run. But it was a good learning lesson. And so I think everyone's having a different relationship with this. Again, I don't mean to go after Zachary. Like, he has feelings. He made a video. I'm sure it will do well. Maybe. This has 57,000 views. Let's reset it, actually. Let's see. Do you like free money? Do you like free money? 59,000 views two days ago. Let's see. The pinned comment he has up. You can't, quote, you can be appreciative and critical of something at the same time. That's healthy, period. Okay. The constant mental battle of create original content, take time and spend resources to research, script, record, edit, upload, hoping the fit does well versus just react to vids, take no risks, reap rewards. I resent that. I think, I think reaction content. I don't know why people think reaction content's easy. Why do they think that? Why do they think it's easy to do reaction content? It's, it's as hard as doing anything else, but... I don't know. I think it's, everything's hard to somebody, but everyone does it for a reason. I think making video essays that are good are very, very hard, right? They think of XQC. Yeah, but XQC is popular because people want to watch XQC. He has the thing. If you're lucky, you have the thing. But if you don't have the thing, then like people aren't going to watch you. You still have to be entertaining. You still have to be interesting. You still have to make them feel good in the bubble. Like, you have to make them, your audience feel good. It's like saying Kim Kardashian got famous doing nothing. That lady is a marketing genius. That's what it is. They're mad. Like, they don't understand. Like, Kim K got famous by making people talk about her all of the time. But to be fair, if they want to know, be known for their art. But this is the creative dilemma. Every creative has to make a decision. How do I get my face in the public so people watch my work? But I hate to say this. Sometimes people like you and not your work. There are so many YouTubers. I like them, but I don't like the work they create. Like, um, Cind uh, QD Cinderella, I love her on the Fear and podcast. Oh my God, she's like my favorite. She's so funny. Her humor's so good. I don't really like her content alone on her own channel for some reason. Um, I like Hassan, but I prefer him on the podcast as well. My favorite, w oh, same thing with uh, Will and same thing, um, uh, help me out here. I like them all on the podcast together. That's my favorite. Probably because they're talking to each other is probably why I like it the best, but I don't like their individual content alone. I don't like as much. Austin, thank you. Why do I always forget Austin? Austin, Austin, Austin. He's the one I always forget. Um, I don't like them independently, but I like them together so much. Good energy, right? Good, good energy. You know, I have been liking Hassan's commentary, but I don't watch it like religiously, but I, you know, it is what it is, right? Discord says, I don't like the idea of I worked harder than you. Like, would he say that if a disabled person who couldn't get out of bed reacted to his content and got more views like he than he did? Who says that disabled people didn't work hard? I think the question is always, why does the audience? So, OK, I think we're playing a game of capitalism and that is audience dictated. So if a person streaming from bed re making reaction content gets more views than my original video, the market has spoken that I do believe that. And I think if I'm competing in the market, I should encourage those viewers to watch the original instead. But if they don't want to watch me, then I go for a different audience. So maybe it's that. Maybe I'm looking at it as a creative and a business person. That I think as a creative, I'm honored. I figured out how to make it work for me full time. First, gratitude. I will, I'm so, so gratitude. I'm just like grateful, grateful. Why are disabled people involved now, chat says? Look, as a dis disabled person myself, like... I am grateful every day that I have a job I can do from home. I think that's like every person's dream who are working on minimal hours, minimal spoons. Like I, and I will work as hard as I can. My my partner knows I, last night, I was like, I couldn't sleep for some reason. So I said, fine, if I'm gonna stay up in bed, I might as well work. I woke up, edited a video, posted it. I got a couple thousand views and it was monetized. I won. I was like, great. If I'm gonna lose out on sleep, I better be making money. And it worked. So it's like, for me, I think it's beautiful. Like I won and then I got some sleep and I feel better and it's great. You know, you know those nights you just can't sleep? Well, girl, let's do it. Now that thing, this is my dream. 
So I will work hard to keep my dream going. And I think for me, it's always worth it. I don't know if this is Zachary's dream. It's his dream to make content because as a person who this is her dream, I just want to keep it going no matter what. No matter what it takes, as long as it doesn't coincide with my, as long as it doesn't clash with my values, of course. We never want it to clash with the values. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You know, I'm not sure. I don't think Zachary was necessarily upset at the reaction, though. I think he liked it. Mm. You can't say you think you liked it. And then, just to be clear. Does you? He, he puts... You can't say you liked the reaction. And then you said react culture crisis, how YouTube algorithm promotes thievery. And you put Asmin's face in it next to next to what's her face. You can't make a video saying Sniper Wolf is the worst person ever. Also, Asmin Gold. Why are you putting Asmin in the thumbnail if you liked? And he asked Asmin to take down the video. So he didn't like it. He didn't like it. Asmin took down the video because he was mad about it. So he did like the video. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Now, from my perspective, I'm never going to watch subscribe to this guy's channel and I'm never going to watch him because it's same thing with Sneeko. If you're upset that another content creator is doing better than you, I can't deal with you. Envy and jealousy is so unattractive in people. Now, I don't experience envy and jealousy, so maybe that's why I don't like it in other people, but it looks bitter. I don't care. I don't care if somebody's doing better than me. I don't care if you make more money off clipping my videos on TikTok than I can. Okay? I don't care. As long as you don't impersonate me or slander me, and in that case, I'll just let you know. But I don't care. I do not, like, no part of me stays up at night thinking about it, girl. You know what I mean? Like, that's the thing is like, I, my brain just doesn't get it. So when I see people being bitter over it, it just makes me turned off because I'm like, ew, you're so lucky that you even have these views. Like, you're so lucky in so many ways that like, this is the kind of luck that content creators are often talking about. It is luck that ABBA came across my content and liked it. And now we're friends and that's really great. It's also luck that part of his audience liked me enough that some of them became patrons and members. And even when Abba and I disagree, it doesn't, it doesn't sway people in directions. Like people like us both for different reasons. Like that's luck. That's what luck is. Luck is a content creator who likes you, sees you, and then you guys promote each other. Luck is like another content creator seeing your content and you guys overlapping and networking in the future. Luck is the chance that it comes across your feed in the first place. As a YouTuber who's competing against all of these millions of other views, it's luck that my video shows up on the home screen even once. It's luck that somebody, you know what I mean, sees me even for a second. He doesn't seem bitter though. Well, I mean, I mean him or Sneeko or anybody else. I think Sneeko was deeply bitter. I think this guy feels bitter enough to ask Asmin to take down the video, which is interesting. I think that's interesting. But you know what? Shout out. If you want that to be the way you do it, then cool. Like again, Zachary's allowed to have his opinion. I'm just giving mine from my perspective as another small content creator. Like, He's 150,000 uh, 150, um, uh, subscribers. Again, his views were doing far less. Like this is one of his best videos and it probably contributed uh, in some way to Asmin participating in it. It's the fifth greatest video. One video says 3 million views. I promise this video belongs here. Okay, interesting title. I wonder why that did so well. And then surviving 30 days Chipotle. I promise I can prove it. Why YouTube has an ad problem. 700,000 views. The Asmin video got 400,000 views. Then 200,000 views. 99,000 views. 90,000 views. 72,000 views. 51,000 views. All the way down to 5,000 views. The end of Millionaire Streamers. 5,000 views a year ago. Okay. His description says a mix of social science, bad jokes, and internet culture. Okay, love it. I wish him the best. I hope he's successful because his success won't change mine. But his idea that Asmin's success will change his success, I think is a bad, it's a bad thought. People being successful won't change the fact that I will be. I think that's how I always think. I don't care how much more of the world is successful. It's not going to impact my success. But see how he thinks Asmin being more successful than him impacts his success? Interesting. I just, my brain doesn't work that way at all. 
you know, just doesn't work that way. But maybe because I deeply believe in myself, probably, probably chat says scarcity mindset isn't good for your health. You know, it doesn't have to be a zero sum game. Chat says he's thinking in terms of how the platform YouTube works. I mean, so am I. We're just playing different games. So I think that should be taken into consideration too. Like we all are playing very different games, right? And so maybe that's it. Maybe he hasn't accepted that Asmin's not playing the game he's playing, but Asmin did take down the video at his request. So it all worked out, I guess, in the end. His video, his face is no longer in Asmin's audience's view. And now he's the guy who was, who made this video. So let's see. Let's see what happens in the future. Anybody have any thoughts, comments, questions? Did we, did we talk about this at length? Did we transform it? Did I properly transform the content? I never know. Good luck, my bro. Here, I'll even link the video because we watched it. I'll link it to chat and I'll link it to Discord. True. Oh my God. That's what my partner said. Chat said, I feel like you're playing a longer game. That's what my partner said. My partner said, well, you're playing a really long game and you're incredibly grateful for how it's going. And I think people that are here to play like a short game are probably more upset. That's exactly what my partner said. I think they're probably right. I am here for the long game. I plan to be here for like, so does Asmin though. Asmin wants to be here till he's old. I want to be here till I'm old. Like I don't plan on leaving YouTube ever. YouTube is a long game for me. And I think that's probably why I'm like, it's working out every day. I'm doing better and better and that's great. Yeah, I'm definitely here for the long game. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, Chat says, I think people think the comp uh, competent creation is a get rich quick plan. Well, I think that's what Sneeko was thinking. I don't think Sneeko, obviously, Sneeko's biggest mistake was he wasn't thinking long term. Like he wasn't thinking long term. And what did he do? He got kicked off YouTube permanently. Idiot, idiot. That's what I don't want people like this thinking. Hey, think long term. Think about long term. Be the content creator, the bigger content creators support and network with. Don't be the content creator that gets mad because you want to be as successful as them and you don't know why. It's not happening. Figure it out. But also like, hello, like Sneeko got banned on YouTube because he quote, he, he was mad Hassan's reaction video was making better, con like getting better views. So he's like, I'm going to be a streamer. <laughs> so stupid. He gave up his whole career on YouTube because Hassan Piker got better views than him. So f dumb. You want to be edgy? Be edgy, bro. Ridiculous. Okay. With that said, don't be a Sneeko. Think long term. If you can, it will, it will as a creative, it will do you better. But I know in this economy, it feels so stressful. But remember that a lot of us work two to three jobs and do YouTube on the side in hopes to do it full time. I, for 10 years, always had two other jobs and did YouTube part time until I could do it full time. And now I stress every day to make sure I can maintain it because that's what a creative does. We act like creatives aren't a dime a dozen in terms of being millionaires. Be grateful you're a middle-class YouTuber because a lot of people just want to get there. You know how many people just want to get there and you're sitting here, bro. Come on, bro. Be grateful. Okay. At the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do. I do what I got to do. He got to do what he got to do. If you don't want to be grateful, that's okay. Wait, wait, wait. Chad says, I think you can be grateful, but still be ambitious. That's me, girl. You just described me. I'm grateful, but ambitious. He's grateful and he's not grateful. He's complaining. That's what I'm trying to say. This is a complaining video. This is a complainer. Sneeko was complaining. There's the difference. Sneeko had a million subscribers and a fan base that was consistent and was only getting bigger every day. And he threw it away because Hassan was getting more views out of reaction content. Stupid. Because he wasn't grateful. He was complaining. Complainers get what complainers get. Okay? Nobody likes a complainer. Period. Be ambitious, but be grateful. Being a complainer and ambitious? Nobody likes that guy. Just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind Cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Thank you.
Da 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 da